Let's cover 12 tips for working in assemblies and joints in Fusion 360. Hey, Tyler Beck with Tekken Espresso. So first, grab your computer and turn on Fusion 360. And a quick shout out to Dell for providing me with a precision 7750 workstation and supporting these tutorials. I've loved using this machine for Fusion, especially for assemblies and joints when the files get larger and RAM and processor matter more. All right, number one, joints should apply to components. So in this example, I have three bodies. You see three bodies over in the browser. If I try to drag one, nothing moves. That's a big giveaway. If things aren't moving around in your assembly, then they don't need a joint. So in order for them to move, they need to be components. So if I wanna convert these to components, I'll right click and choose components from bodies. I now have three components that move around in space. All right, number two, something needs to be grounded when it comes to your assembly. So I'm going to select this component. I select it over in the design and it shows me that it's this component. I'll right click and ground it. This will lock it in space. You can also use an as-built joint and tie it to the origin if you'd like. But for simplicity, for beginners, let's ground it. Next, joints are a little bit different than if you're used to SolidWorks or Inventor. <clears throat> with mates and constraints, it's pretty different. So with one simple joint, if I do a corner to a corner, it brings it into location. But then you get to specify the motion. If we choose rigid, you can see it can't move around at all. And that's what's pretty different. With one joint, you can fully lock something into place or achieve the amount of degrees of freedom that you'd like, like this Revolute. This is different where in SolidWorks, you typically need about three mates to get what you want or to get it fully constrained. Number four, the first selection is the thing that moves. So in this example, this is ground. This is my anchor design. And what I'd like to do is maybe bring this shaft in and have it move along this axis. So what I choose first, up from the toolbar, I'll choose joint, select this component, and I'll select this center area and it brings it in and it's now asking what type of joint would you like? You can see it's spinning. That's not what I want. Make sure the axis is correct. In this case, you look at the animation. It's going in and out, that's terrific. If it was going up and down, that'd be incorrect. So find the one that you want and use that animation to help you understand what you're getting. Number five, whatever you select when it comes to the joint. So when you hover over, you'll notice it's giving me the joint origin that we're selecting. So I'm going to this middle middle of that cylinder. And now if I come over and select this center, it's going to put it kind of off center, so to speak, right? So it's gonna put it all the way over um, in this Revolute. So let's actually go uh, rigid so we know where it sits. You can see it's not aligned how we want. It's doing what I told it to do from the middle of this component to the side face here. That brings us into our next tip number six, using control or command on your keyboard. So I can see this middle center joint origin easily. I'll click it. But what I want to do is select in the middle if I can. So I'll actually kind of hover here and hold control in my Dell Windows machine and select that midpoint and it brings it just where I want it to go, but it's doing a slider. That motion is incorrect. So let's go over to the motion and then choose the right way or the correct emotion that I want for this joint. I want it to spin about and there we go. That Revolute, that looks much better. We'll accept it and we're good. Number seven, where does this stuff get stored? So if you go over to your browser, you'll notice the joints folder and that's where these joints are being stored. Number eight, J for joint is the shortcut. That'll bring that up. You can also do S for search or S for shortcut and type in joint and find it here and as well as can find it up in the toolbar. Number nine, sometimes you need to find that midpoint. And we used to have to do a shortcut for this in the older format of Fusion. So we'll start a joint. And what I'm gonna do is come over and I can select the middle. That's easy to do on this first one. Great, and that's the one I want to go in. But over, I want the center or center in space between these two holes. So what I can do is come over and choose between two faces. And I'll select the two interfaces. 
it then lets me locate that center, but it's now asking me where in the center would you like it or you know which joint origin are you thinking about? So I'll come over and say, yeah, I wanted the one that's you know kind of right lined up in there. Click that and it's grabbing the center between two faces. So friendly reminder, it's right here in the dialog. Number 10, sometimes when you're doing a joint, it gives you kind of the opposite of what you wanted. So in this case, I select these two points and it's bringing them together and showing me the animation. But what I can do is hit this flip button. And so this re flips the orientation of those two components being aligned. This can be incredibly helpful when it's basically doing the opposite of what you wanted. Number 11, when you move things about, Fusion is trying to pay attention. And you can think of this as kind of capturing um, everything in its location in space. And so when you look at this position, you've got the option to revert. So this will revert back to before I was moving it like crazy and it doesn't store anything. Or when you move it, you can make this your starting position and you can capture that position. I would be mindful that having a lot of these in your design tree can start to tax and slow you down. So um, sometimes it's better not to overdo the captured positions. Number 12, what about joint limits? Right now, it is doing exactly what I told it to do, which is solving all these joints, but it's breaking, but it's not obeying any kind of reality. Right, things can go through each other. That's not cool. That's not what I want. So how do you make it behave correctly? Well, that's joint limits. So the one I care about is this um, revolute joint. I'd like for it to limit maybe from, you know, maybe here to about somewhere in, somewhere in there, right? That looks great. So what we can do is find that revolute joint that we did. So if I click on it, there it is. Now what you can do is right click and choose edit joint limits. Or if you find it down in the design history, you can right click and do edit joint limits. And what we'd like to do is maybe a minimum and a maximum. And what I love about this particular angled one is you can drag these arrows and it gives you a preview. I love that instead of typing it in and kind of fussing with it a little bit, I can do these two and then I can choose to animate it now, it's not going to bring everything into the solution until we accept it. Now, when I bring it about, you can see, okay, it's locking in. Great. And that looks pretty good. Maybe a little too close. It's, is it, it looks like it's striking there. We could run an interference. So I can go back, edit that joint limit, and back it off a little bit.